Jim Knopf's resident field tech, East Central Illinois. Been with the company 22 years. Been working on combines since they first brought them over from Germany. I'm Brett Zach. I'm PSSR in Central Illinois. Um, I came on board in 98 when we took on the combine business and I've been with them ever since. Um, what we're going to do today is a maintenance walk around on a 700 series machine. This happens to be a 740 um, with auto loop. So your machine may be a little different, but a lot of the functions, a lot of the things that you're going to need to look at are the same. Well, let's start with the feeder house. Um, I prefer to roll the chain around by hand, uh, roll it around, look at your connector links, make sure all the wires are good. Um, look at all the slats, make sure you don't have any bent slats. You get a bent slat, it'll develop a click in the chain. You'll wear your chain out prematurely. Take a flashlight, shine up inside it. This particular machine has got a upper guide slat, wooden slat that has come loose and turned crossways. Something like that, when it rips out, could cause some pretty severe damage and some downtime that you aren't expecting. So just check things over and uh, your feeder house stop or your front drum stops. Um, depends on what head you're running. If you're still running a conventional table, you want your drum down in, uh, with the table up for corn. If you're running a Macdon, you want those stops up all the time. Uh, one thing on this machine, it's got automatic hydraulic tension on the feeder house chain. On previous machines, if you have a machine that doesn't have that, usually what I like to see is the third slap back just to barely tick on your wear strips, not laying on them, just, just kind of tick it a little bit. This feeder house tension chain has a lot to do with grain quality. Because if you're grinding it at the throat, it's going to be all the way through the machine. And that's what we're trying to do with these machines, superior grain quality. So make sure and check that. I usually take a breaker bar, go up over this one, underneath the next one, and you can just kind of bounce it, pop it, and it kind of just smacks the floor. You're good to go. If it doesn't have the uh, intermediate roller in it, there's two access plates in the side of the, of the housing. I prefer to stick my arm inside there and you can get right to that chain and can feel it. If you do have the manual tensioning, you make a little adjustment, you need to run that feeder house uh, to make that chain find where it wants to be. Because if you just tighten it up to where you think it's right, when you fire it up, now it's gonna to move too much and it's gonna to be too tight and you're gonna cut out the life of the chain. Look at your slats. Make sure they're not bent, they're not bowed. Um, I know some of you guys are in rock conditions or hedge posts or whatever. You know, check your slats. If they are bowed, replace them. I mean, you can try to straighten them for a spare, but they'll bend again. So make sure and replace them. One thing that has helped with that, some they do sell a ring that welds on here that adds a stiffener here in the center. Um, they, they seem to work really well. It helps protect those slats and they, they don't, they, they will still move a little bit, but they won't get the big bow. kink in them. They don't bow. Usually it will go ahead and stop the chain, let the, and the slip clutch will go off and you can clear the obstruction out of it and hopefully won't break the chain. Okay, come around here to the left side. We're going to talk about the dust diverter a little bit. Um, there's the door on top, you can take it off and clean it out, is it pulls a lot of fodder up into it. You've got to clean them regularly. One of the things that has seemed to help is stacking some washers underneath it and it will draw a little air along with. A lot of guys, to prevent damage to it, will take the belt off in corn. Um, it's probably not a bad practice to do uh, because you, it'll may save you some parts. The shimming it up, is the best thing I've seen. And you're just gonna to have to play with whatever works for your yep. environment to find the combination. And what I have seen that works the best is shim it at an angle. So shim the center ones up higher so that you've got an airflow going through there. This machine does not have the 200 kilowatt drive. Um, 
a lot of the machines out there do. So basically, instead of just having pulleys and belts, you have a gearbox back here for the uh, feeder house chain and another gearbox up here with, uh, uh, for the header jack shaft drive. <clears throat> Pay attention to this area because that gearbox has got a cooler underneath it and there's a belt driving a pump. You want to met definitely no leaks. Make sure the belt is tight enough not to slip, but not too tight that it causes damage to the pump. Uh, it's a pretty crucial area. There is no monitoring of that system. You have to visually inspect it for leaks, over temperature. Uh, it's just a good idea to get off every now and then and lay your hand on it and make sure that it's not too hot because there, you can have a pump failure and not know it until it's too late. On, on that, if you have that system, this hole on this shaft is actually a breather. So if you see a little oil leaking out of the drive shaft, it is kind of normal. They will breathe a little bit. And that's okay, because it's not plugged. What you shouldn't do is take a pick and try to dig that out because all you're doing is pushing stuff into that. Take an air hose, try to keep it blowed out. But like Jim said, if there's a little oil just kind of seeping, that's a good thing because it's doing its job. <laughs>